Hey, what's happening guys? Today, we are gonna take a look at this power station, which was sent out to us free of charge for our consideration by the Oops Company, and that is spelled O-U-P-E-S. And they are out of California. This is a big, heavy power supply. Uh, it is 186,000 milliamp hour capacity 595 watts of output power and will charge up to 80 percent in about three and a half hours according to their literature now one of the nice things about it is that you can use all of these outputs simultaneously so if we power this up here you can see it's got a really nice screen on the front of it and if we plug something in like for instance, here is a uh, it's like a power monitor. Plug that in, and let's plug something into it. Okay, so I plugged it in. I activated the AC. And I just got this heat gun here on a low setting. Let's see, we can see what the uh, power, right now it's just putting out 40 watts. Okay, one hours. 110.4 volts, well, it's a little bit low. Half an amp. So, let's turn it up. Now we're doing 3.6 amps. Let's get back to watts here. And we'll crank up the temperature. You can see we have an indicator for the cooling fan, which we can now hear running. This is working great. So yeah. Powering AC appliances is no trouble. This is probably the most uh, strong thing I have is 1,700 watts. So that worked out pretty good. Now, this is good for electronic devices as well, they claim, because it uses true sine wave output. All right, so I've hooked up a little... Uh, little jankiness down here that I'm not going to show you <laughs> so that we can see the waveform on the oscilloscope. So let's go take a look at that. Come in here. And let's see I don't know how well you guys can see that. We're getting just a 60 hertz and a decent sine wave. I'm going to prop that on one second. Okay, so there we're looking at the sine wave, and yeah, it does look like a true sine wave. The earlier in, uh, power inverters used a square wave. It, it was okay for most things, most power tools, but if you needed to use something electronic with it, a lot of the uh, electronic devices didn't like a real square wave. So I'm going to plug in The heat gun again we're going to put a bit of a load on here we're going to see what happens to the wave a little fluctuation but not too bad okay turn it up a little bit oh So we're outputting about 30 watts, and you can see the sine wave is holding steady, and everything is looking really good. So it is a true sine wave output, which is a really nice feature to have in one of these power stations. So as far as powering AC devices, that works, that's working out pretty good. I don't know if I remember saying this earlier, but this uses the LIFE P04 or Life EPO4 batteries, which is a type of a lithium cell, 
Li lithium Fe iron PO4 is phosphate, so it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. And they differ from LiPo batteries in, in a number of different ways, um, namely in their charge and discharge cycles and their energy density. Uh, lithium ion batteries have an energy density of about 150 to 200 watt hours per kilogram versus the lithium iron phosphate at 90 to 120 watt hours per kilogram. So lithium iron is normal go-to for power hungry devices. But the other hand, the discharge rate for LiPo, LiFi PO4 batteries outmatches lithium iron at 25 times uh, the charge rate. So at 25C, lithium iron phosphate batteries have voltage discharges that are excellent at higher temperatures as well. So if you're going to be using something long term, medium to high power, then the LiFi PO4 batteries are excellent. Now, let's take a look at some of the other outputs that are available on this device. So if we come down here, we have a uh, 12 volt car charge port, I guess that's what you call it, you know, the uh, cigarette lighter adapter. We have two 2.1 millimeter uh, 12 volt DC ports. We have a USB-C port that is good for charging and discharging up to 60 watts. And we do have two quick charge USB 4 ports. Now one thing I don't like, and I see this in a lot of these, is this goofy thing here where your ground plug goes. Obviously this being a battery powered device, a ground isn't absolutely necessary. No, not necessary at all because what are you grounding it to? Nothing. But geez, just, just put, the, put the hole in there. On the back side, we have a three position light. You know, you gotta, gotta have your light in there. And on this side, we have our input 12 to 30 volts for charging. So you can charge this from the five volt USB C. You can charge it from the included adapter here. That's this guy, which is 24 volts. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, 30 volts. So 24 volts is good. 24 volts at 4 amps. You can also charge it from a solar panel, and you can charge it from the car, not through that port, but through there. They give you an adapter for that as well. There's a little bit of info on their website, and I'll put a link to that down below, telling you that... Uh, you can run a rice cooker for an hour, an electric drill for an hour and a half, a uh, HD projector for about five hours, half hour for a hot kettle. Uh, you can recharge your drone 11 times, your laptop four times, your camera 27 times, and your iPhone 40 times. So, you know, that's all going to vary with the state of the batteries you have. Um, how many times you've recharged this? They're claiming a, a 3,600 cycles on the charge discharge and as far as the charging goes with the wall outlet from a USB-C it says it will charge in three and a half hours from a solar panel seven and a half hours car charging ten and a half hours USB-C port 12 hours and the wall outlet seven and a half hours now mine charged to uh, hundred percent at about eight hours but they're only going up to uh, 80% in their charge recommendations here. The screen is very nice. As you can see, we have our symbol there for the AC. We have a symbol over here for car and DC. And we have a symbol down here for USB-A. And there will be one for USB-C if that was active as well. We have the circle showing us at a glance how much uh, capacity of the batteries left as well as this there is a warning symbol that will appear up here you saw the fan symbol come on down here there's also an over temp and an under temp as well so once again real quickly we'll go over the specs the capacity is 595.2 watt hours 19.2 volts 31 amp hours 186,000 milliamp hours battery cell type is Life Po 4 3600 cycles, 
two AC outputs, 110 volts, 600 watts, 1200 watt peak, two DC outputs, 12 volt, 10 amp peak, USB-C output, 60 watts, USB-A output, uh, three amps, two amps, or 1.5 amp, 18 watts. Max waveform is a sine wave. For input, it's looking for 12 to 30 volts. USB input up to 60 watts. Recharging temperature between minus four and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And the lighting is full bright, half bright, and SOS mode. The size is 10.5 by 7.76 by 9.73 inches, and it weighs 15 pounds. It's a big boy. And it's going to run you in the range of about 500 bucks. But if you are a camper or a radio operator who likes to uh, operate your radios out in the field or just want to have something on hand for a power outage and you don't want the trouble of a generator, something like this will get you through the troubles. So that's it. I think it's a pretty cool device. I'd like to thank Oops for sending this out to us. Again, I'll put a link below where you can get more information or purchase one if you're interested. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.